Hi folks, hope you're all still well out there. Today I'm going to be doing a video overview of CryptPad. And CryptPad, just in, in a nutshell, is an online collaboration platform. Something similar to Office 365 or Google Documents. But I think it offers a little bit more than that. So I'll be going through why CryptPad, features of CryptPad, We'll just have a quick look at their open source website and then I'll do the usual tour through the interface just showing you what's sort of available. It's, it's going to be a broad shallow look really at CryptPad. I'm not going into any depth or specific detail. It's just more for people that want to know what is it or how could I use it, that sort of thing. And I will have chapter links below the video so you can jump to the relevant parts or jump back if you want to. So the first question really is going to be, well, why would I use something like CryptPad? So as we can see here, first of all, it, it is fully open source. And what's also very important here is that it's funded by French and European research grants as well as private donations. And the reason why that's important is because it doesn't rely on selling personal data or information or at working with advertising companies or anything like that. So that already says something about its philosophy as an as a organization. It is zero knowledge which is privacy in other words the data is encrypted in your browser using this chain pad algorithm so it's fully encrypted even though you're all collaborating together online the server side as well as on the internet if you're using ssl in your browser which you should be means nobody else can see that data that's sitting either in transit or on the server so whether it's an administrator or a hosting company or whatever the case is they cannot see or access any of your data the next point there around registration being free without personal data same thing it does not require some authenticated legal email address or a cellular phone number or anything like that so again from that side you're not tying yourself really to your your real persona then Obviously, the, the big feature around it is being able to collaborate online. If you are happy with, say, just working offline using your MS Word, which also reports home, but maybe more preferably something like LibreOffice or OpenOffice or FreeOffice or one of those other products, then, you know, CryptPad not really going to be for you. I would say its big strength is being able to collaborate online, to share to other people, to share to public, you know, etc. in a more secure and anonymous way. It can be self-hosted as well, being open source. They've got Docker images and that sort of thing. So again, it does give you that flexibility to be able to self-host if you so wish. And you could host it from home. You could host it on a VPS or a server or inside a corporation if you want to keep everything really, really secure with just within inside your organization. The other thing is it is future-proof. It defaults to using things like the International Open Document Format, ODF. But... It can export to HTML, doc, and some of the Microsoft formats, comma delimited files, PDF, PNG, and MD for the code files. It'll also import. So I have import, I've exported, for example, from Google Docs in ODF, and I've exported it into uh, Microsoft spreadsheet formats, and I've imported it into CryptPad as well. And that was mainly because I had a few issues of people saying, well, I don't want to use uh, Google Docs to access the shared you know, spreadsheet you've got or whatever the case is. So it was a very easy process. And I've also uploaded from my own drive. I also, as a matter of fact, anyway, export important documents I've done to my hard drive because I did have the case once with a self-hosted instance that it disappeared. That does happen. So, you know, don't go put your crown jewels in one place. Always make sure you do have some other forms of backup. So let's have a look then at some of the features that it offers. It's got shared folders, very much like Google Drive has got. You can share a particular folder. You can have subfolders, that sort of setup. And obviously anything can be in those folders. You could have PDFs, images, web pages, in fact, if you wanted to create a sort of a simple website even. Then you've got a text editor, very much like Google Documents. Uh, just as a matter of interest, why I started using CryptPad originally was before Google Documents and even Microsoft had full online collaboration, and I'm talking about live collaboration, it, with chat and everything else, CryptPad already had it actually. So it was one of the things that I originally did start making use of. Then 
It's got sheet, which is like a spreadsheet type functionality. It's got something called code, which is a code editor. It's really very much a markup editor. I would say I, I don't see that it's got any of the intelligence that you've got in some of the integrated development environments. So it is very much more of a markdown editor, I would say. It's got presentation, which is similar to Impress on LibreOffice for doing presentations. Obviously, there's also a presentation mode, so you could share your presentation and people could flip through it, or you could use it even to make to do your presentations. Then it's got public and private polls, where you can do a poll, online poll for people. It's got Kanban type functionality, which is a sort of a project management to-do list type functionality where you can have sort of swim lanes of status and various things and move your cards left and right as, as statuses and so on change. Very, very popular. I've done a video, by the way, on a, on a good open source Kanban alternative. And um, I'll put a link in the top right of this video as well. You can just have a look at that Kanban functionality. If you're interested in hosting a way more detailed self-hosted version of Kanban, that, that's actually very useful. And then it's got whiteboard type collaboration as well, which is very useful for brainstorming and especially now with people working remotely from home. Then, as I did mention, also the collaborate function is there and you can collaborate with contacts. They say this is the best option because obviously everything is kept fully within the CryptPad instance. Nothing is really leaving it. So obviously your security and your privacy is best managed in, in this manner. Then you can share a link, which is what I often do if I want to publicly share something that I've done, like I've done comparisons of different secure messengers for Android or iOS, then I will often share that as a public link. People can then drill through left, right, up, down, look at the comments I made and that sort of thing. It's a lot more interesting really sometimes. And the other option is to have an embed link. Now that can be used to embed into a website somewhere. Again, you can set the rights as view only or uh, edit options for any of these. And then lastly, just here, you've the different types of access rights you can grant for any of these above documents would be a view only, which is what you'd use for public. There's a present mode or rights, which means things like the spreadsheets and the code editor would be able to, pre it, to, be, able to be viewed in a present or presentation type mode. And then there's an edit where people can actually edit the document. There's a view once and then self-destruct option, which is also quite interesting. So you've got a fair bit of versatility um, in this product. So just having a look then at the open source side of things. This is published on GitHub and you'll see there is the name of the organization. They are a non-profit. The address, if anybody's interested, is up at the top here. So you can have a look here as well as any particular issues that are being handled. But you'll see here commits are from six days ago, five days ago. So it's an actively updated and developed project, which is always good for open source projects. As I've said before, there's zero knowledge. Uh, go a bit around the installation here. Docker images if you want to install it yourself. And then interestingly on the security, they're very, very open about it. As they say, it might not be fully anonymous, obviously, if you're not providing any personal information, but I think they're talking more about IP addresses. You know, there are things like images and things that can be inserted that when the browser opens, it could reveal its IP address. Now, this is not unique just to Cryptad. I think they're just being very, very open about it. Um, but they also talk here about certain things that can happen but they will be, it will be seen as an active attack and it makes it detectable. So it's not like something like this is going to happen without you knowing about it. But generally speaking, you know, you're not going to have, first of all, anybody really knowing who you are. And secondly, the data itself is fully encrypted. You know, one of the bigger risks possibly is the data disappears or it's destroyed. You know, that, that if with the server, that, that is the bigger risk, I suppose. So that's very well much it. And there's the open source license as well at the bottom. So then just briefly, the website, if you haven't logged in, this is what you're going to see. This is the functionality that you've got. The address is at the top as well if you want to visit it. It is private by design. This particular instance, this is interesting why I'm using this instance now, of course, is it is the official instance 
of the of the Cryptpad project. So it is maintained by the devs and everything themselves. So obviously you've got the latest versions, latest features, that sort of thing. It's the most stable ongoing one, of course. So maybe a good place to start if you're not hosting your own one. You know, otherwise check out the other self-hosted instances. Just be wary, as I said, they can just disappear. That, that has happened. So that's why I'm using this one at the moment. It is open source and they have got also a little bit of an about page here. Just again, going in, it's private collaboration. It's a full suite of applications. You can, it's organized with Crypt Drive. And there is their business model. As I said, it relies on grants and donations. It doesn't profit from user data or anything like that. It's important to look at a philosophy of a company. It's not about whether it's free or not. It's why is it free? In this case, they are spelling out here why it's free. There's no data being sold, advertising, or anything else happening in the background. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump then into the user interface. This is the drive view that you're going to see. Um, at the moment, while lockdowns are still in progress, I see you getting a full one gigabyte of space on the free account. So there is paid versions of the account, you know, to increase your amount of storage. I've obviously got a couple of documents already here. And a lot of my comparison sheets that I do, I do them actually using CryptPad anyway. That's how I do it. And then I share the link out publicly. That's basically how I, I work with my shared documents. We can just for the by way of looking maybe at, say this one is a document, just to open that up first of all and have a look what documents look like. This is a default document you'll have anyway when you when you get it. So this will be the first one that you do open. You'll see you've got a file menu where you can here export to offline. You can make a copy online. You can import, say, from your hard drive or from some other place. You can also save or import templates. You can tag your documents for searching and finding later. You can look at the history of any updates and changes you made to the document. And you can also have snapshot views. So you can update and create snapshots to jump you know, forward or back and look at snapshots as well. So it's got a lot of the, the things you'd expect with a any good document management system. There's also the properties for the document, which will include here things like its unique identifier. That would be the link. It's obviously not the complete link, but that's the link that you'd copy to give out if you wanted to have somebody editing this document. And the read-only link that you might share publicly when it was last accessed, the size, that sort of thing. But there are some more options for sharing that I will show just now. Then you can switch on and off the toolbar, obviously. Up here, you can change the name of the document itself that will appear in the, the drive view. And typically with a type of document like this, you're going to have things like contents, table of contents. You can jump to parts of the document over here. And you've got a toolbar that you're going to see for most of the text type documents. So it'll be things like link, uh, inserting a link, unlinking a link, placing an anchor for your table of contents. You can put a comment in the document, a mass formulas, a table, horizontal lines. It's all the usual sort of, there's all your usual formatting that you expect with an editor, your numbered lists, unnumbered lists, indentings, quoting, block quotes your different types of alignment, the style options here as well, heading or body paragraph type formatting, obviously your different fonts, font sizes, and then the text color and the background as well. So you've got a lot of those options. Here is where you would turn on the chat feature. So this is, for example, a thing that really used to bug me, obviously, in the early days of uh, Google Documents, because I always thought, why, if it's online, was it not allowing you real-time editing? Well, you know, here you can not only edit the document together with somebody, but you can have a chat running on the right-hand side over here where the various people will chat. And it will color code the different users with different color fonts and so on based on what they are chatting about. You've obviously also got comments that will be inside the document as well. So if I was to take something like that and comment 
here. This will be my comment. This is a document in the actual content, not a chat now, of course. That is how you're going to see there's a comment there and you'd be able to instantly see it. You can mark it as resolved or you can reply back to the person as well or you can edit it and so on. So everything you really need for on online collaboration. Then you've also got the share access. So you can share to just your contacts. You can share a link with either just view access or edit access. You can tick on obviously for embed mode there. And you've got the embed links as well that you can actually share. You'll see it's a bit of a longer link that you'll put in. And they are warning you here, of course, recipients will gain non-revocable access to your content. So just be careful about when you when you share and so on. And you will just copy that. And this is part of the problem, actually. If you copy this link, the manner that you share the link can expose your document. If you're going to use a non-secure, say something like email, which is actually not very secure, especially if it's not encrypted, just bear in mind if anybody manages to grab that link from your email, well, they've got access to edit your document or view your document. So think about how you're going to share links. That's why they say if you really want to be secure, self-host, and then maybe only use profiles that you share by profile for people that have actually got profiles on the server itself. Then nothing actually leaves the organization or goes out on the internet at all. And then here, clicking on the access, you can set an expiration date. I haven't got an access list at the moment, but you could have a list of who's got access and so on, and you can expire access as well over there. This will give you an idea if there's any notifications or turning on and off notifications as well. And then under your profile, that's where you'll be able to go and change your avatar and description and so on. You could jump to Crypt Drive. If you've got Teams, you can view your contacts, change settings. And there's a lot more information over here as well. Maybe we can actually just quickly have a look at the pricing before we jump off it. So non-registered, no cost, no personal information required, access to all apps, open docs, etc, etc. You've got a registered user where you register on their service. In other words, just with a login and a password. Okay, you don't have to provide personal information, still no personal information. But you've got a few additional things as well that you can do with it over there as well. And then there is a more premium account where you pay, you know, whatever you, you're accessing, where it does require an email address. Remember, it doesn't have to be your own personal email address. You can use a Gmail address or a Proton mail address or whatever the case is. And you've got extra storage. So you can get anything from 5 gigs a month to 50 gigs a month and faster support and that sort of thing. It's pretty well much the usual thing there, really. So that's the document then. Let's go back to Drive. And let's show a spreadsheet this time. I'm going to look at the one that I did for secure messengers that I have shared previously. Okay, so just to show you here, you've got all the usual, I think, options people are used to for spreadsheets you'll see they are actually using an online version by the way of only office just in case you're wondering where the actual code comes from uh, you've got all your layout options formula options just to give an idea of some of the formulas there's quite a few there that's financial uh, auto sum options so there's a lot of quick Quick function views as well and searching for functions, mass and trig functions, and more functions, database type functions as well. Engineering, information type functions, these will be querying something in the cells, whether it's blank, is there an error. So you can build up quite a lot of of programmable type of information. Typically use these things as well, maybe for highlighting, for example, if there's an error or if there's a blank cell or there's a reference uh, error or something, you'd maybe 
color the cell a certain color to indicate there's an error. You know, you could use it for that sort of thing. I actually quite like that. Especially giving it to people, to someone else to fill in. It can highlight errors or pop up a message probably for them. Okay, this is all the statistical type functions. So certainly quite a wealth. You can do named ranges as well. I don't think I've actually named ranges in here. And you can obviously execute the calculations over there. And you've got the normal things like your your border style controls. I've got a fill on here, but you can change the border types. Okay, I've still got the chat on. Let me just close the chat there. I think some of this other is context. Uh, it's filters and alignments of various cells. So some of it will depend on what cell you actually uh, sitting on but you've got all your full options there there's your data sorting removing duplicates data validation and grouping you've got some pivot table functionality as well you can see your collaboration options there adding of a comment you can go into co-edit mode fast or or strict mode so there are the two different types you can obviously maybe it'll make a difference if you've got a lot of people collaborating with you and then just some of the, the various view options you will see the freeze panes I have actually got freeze panes active here because it made it a lot easier for people then viewing the spreadsheet so if I go down for example you can see the top two cells are frozen and the same thing with the products on the left over here if I have to go to the right it, it makes it a lot easier to to actually read if I had frozen the cells You'll see this, it's highlighting that there are some comments here. And I had put a comment in, I think, somewhere here that it was actually relating there. Just in case anybody didn't know what that stood for, it was end-to-end -end encryption. Again, you can reply or delete or edit it if you want to. So it related to this cell, the E2EE -E over there, just to make it more readable. So I think that looks fairly familiar to most people, the ribbon bar type type look. And by the way, yes, if you use OpenOffice offline as well on your on your own machine or your desktop computer, it's going to have the same sort of functionality. I'd also made use here of color coding when I do comparisons. I like using color coded backgrounds to indicate if it's you know neutral, good, bad, or whatever the case is as well, and putting my references below it, and so on. I'm not going to go through this again. It's the same share options, same access options, really, same chat options on the side, notifications, that sort of thing. So nothing really unique, I think, to see there. Let's go to the next one. This is the code one. I haven't really used the code one, to be honest. But you'll see here is the markdown. So I think if I said the cat jumped you know the usual story or it's, is that the the cow jumped over the moon or something um, you'll see there it's using the markdown type syntax so a lot of people use that it's another way of also collaborating on documents supposedly it's also used a little bit for code if people want to collaborate around source code real t in real time that is and this is another way you know to do it you could use this as well so um, yeah, the options there are fairly similar. You've got theme, or you can insert documents. And you can turn this toolbar on and off over there as well. You can change this view as well to a list view like that, or a gallery view as well. Maybe it's easier to see as a whiteboard. So the whiteboard, as you're busy drawing on it, your team or your three or four friends or whatever you've done you've you've invited they're going to be collaborating and seeing the same thing that you seeing here in real time so again very useful if you want to do sort of whiteboard type type collaboration and again i don't think this is something if i remember correctly that google documents uh can't remember office 365 maybe in teams for example but as i said again self-hosted free open source fully encrypted so you know there's the sort of a difference it may not have every bell and whistle on it but you've got quite a lot of things you can do at least anyway there again the same options 
You can save it as an image and you can also export this to what a PNG image, yes. You can also insert here if you needed to, you can insert images or other documents or whatever on into your whiteboard as well. So yeah, that's basically whiteboards. Uh, what else have we not covered here? Oh, a poll. I don't know if this poll, let me just have a look if this poll was a real poll. Oh, it is a poll, yes. Okay, so this is probably a poll that I had tested at one stage. It was a test poll, do you eat low carb, high fat, was the question. And the options people could answer would have been yes, no, or what is it? Or whatever other options you wanted to include. And it's got provision also, for example, for a comment that a person can make. And you've got options as well, if I remember correctly, for setting whether it's uh, more than one option can be answered, whether it's a, like a multiple type option or whether you could only select one of these. It's got a couple of the sort of the standard things for polls. So if you've got very simple polls you want to run, then this is something quick and dirty you need to do for a poll. And this is one way of doing it. And again, complete privacy, it can be anonymous. You know, it, if you only share that link with seven people, they do not have to register. They click on the link, they respond to the poll, done. So it's quite a nice option. If you obviously want highly detailed polls, which reminds me, I must probably do an overview of Lime Survey at some point. Lime Survey is another open source product that you can self-host as well with tons and tons of functionality for polling. So this is really supposed to be a very high level sort of easy poll and I think it'll export to CSV type format, yes, where you can analyze it in a spreadsheet as well if you want to. But that's basically polls then. So I think let's have a look at Kanban because I don't have a real existing one at the moment with, with a lot of good data in it. It'll either be an own one. There is, by the way, documentation over there if you want to get more information about how it works. You can set an expiration date for it. You can give it a password as well, especially if you're sharing a, pu a public link. You can have no templates or you can create a new template. And I had something old over there, but this doesn't appear to be anything in it. So I'll just say no template create. They really give you a couple of default ones here just to start off with. So, you know, this would be your to do or your brainstorming over here. You can rename these to anything you want to. You could call this brainstorming if you wanted to. You can change the color as well over there if you want to. The idea being is you populate over here in this first sort of swim lane and you'd start moving items across to other statuses. So these will be all the items that are in progress at the moment and these will be the ones that are done. But you can create additional ones here, um, say for example, parked, that we're going to hold it maybe just for later, you know, and you can move it then as well into some place over here whichever order you you actually want so this item one might be decide on a video topic name video what else we want to have here for brainstorming decide date and so, so it'll go on remember this can be multiple people in your team all working together adding information and cards over here so now what you can do is you can say you know what actually for the naming I'm gonna park that until later anyway I'm not, I'll, I'll do that last when I'm ready what we've probably got to do first of all is really decide on a date so we're gonna move that into in progress at the moment so now that we've got it in progress over here you can also go and edit it and you could change the title obviously if you wanted to or you could start putting a few ideas down here for deciding the date um, maybe next monday does that suit ev everyone oh, do i have to spell it correctly does that suit everybody you've got some 
formatting options there. You can tag it as well, person's name if necessary, because you can filter here by tags as well. So one way is to use people's names here or nicknames or whatever the case is. And you could filter and then just have a look at the stuff that is relevant, you know, to yourself, really. Oh, I've actually made a mistake there. You see already. Not next mob day, next Monday. We can change the color as well of these columns. So there's, there's a fair bit. Look, this is not a, a highly detailed Kanban type application. It doesn't got plugins and, and lots of other things. But you know what? For, for very general brainstorming and so on, this is actually a really quite a nice application. It just gives you that functionality. You can't really do this in a spreadsheet or anything else. So I think for many people, the top type of planning they want to do this is going to be very useful and of course you can have your live chat running over here on this side and you've got a couple of options as well on the file menu again snapshot saves of it uh, look at the history of all edits tagging that's tagging for them for the can board itself making copy importing exporting let's just look and see what it exports at oh it exports as a json file okay interesting so that could actually import into other Kanban software that supports JSON imports. So yeah, that's really Kanban without going into too much more detail in it, because uh, I'm gonna make a fool of myself. You see it is saving here automatically. You can see the, the confirmation that it is saved. And if I give this a name, just say Kanboard test, there it's showed saved and I can just close that in the browser now and you should see it show up there we go can Kanban test and it shows you last access when created and and so on as well and I'm the owner of it so uh, yeah that's that's really that we can just have a look at the where what the help looks like this is the address at the top here docs.gripad.fr the English user guide there's a couple of different language options French and German as well and you'll see there's a bit of there's more information about the instances user account security drive that sort of thing and you can also go into the applications uh, themselves over here and get more information about how they work so there you see a better example than I did of of Kanban organizing columns cards card editors displays and then importing and exporting as well as some frequently asked questions as well so yeah it's supposed to be just a quick overview really of cryptpad and what it all can do and emphasizing the privacy options that you have and as i said it's really an online collaborator so i hope you found it slightly interesting and I'll be coming up with another video again in the next week or so. I'll be featuring another open source, usually a self-hostable product that you can host on your own and within your own organization as well. I haven't quite decided what it is yet, but it'll come to me in the coming week. Maybe I'll use some Kanban to plan it. And yeah, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.